Okay, all uh, commands are ready to go. Everyone happy? Good. Thank you, Commander. Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Commander Erica Merrin of the Australian Federal Police. Uh, firstly, I'd just like to start by thanking the South Australian Police for the significant resources and support they've provided the Australian Federal Police with Operation Ironside here in Adelaide. The level of uh, cooperation has been unprecedented in the history of our partnership. As you heard from AFP Commissioner Kershaw yesterday, the AFP-led Operation Ironside is a global investigation that has inflicted maximum damage to transnational serious organised crime with devastating consequences for those who seek to do harm to Australians and Australian interests. The community of South Australia is a safer place because of this operation. This week, more than 600 officers conducted searches across 95 locations in the state. Operation Ironside has resulted in the arrest and charging of people who we allege are some of the most dangerous criminals in Australia. We allege they're members of transnational serious organised crime groups with links to Europe and outlaw motorcycle gangs. We allege they've been trafficking illicit drugs into and across Australia at an industrial scale. We've arrested the alleged directing entities behind these crimes, prevented acts of violence in suburbs and frustrated criminals by seizing their ill-gotten wealth. For three years, Operation Ironside in Australia has been covert and the AFP has been arresting and charging alleged offenders. The Anon platform has given law enforcement a window into a level of criminality that we've never seen before on this scale. This platform has been now turned off for operational reasons. Here in South Australia, during the course of Operation Ironside, the Australian Federal Police arrested 22 men on several charges, including importing and trafficking methamphetamine and cocaine and transporting millions of dollars in cash into state. The AFP alleges these men are members of a transnational organised crime group with links to Europe. Further to that, the joint AFP South Australia Police Operation Ironside caused mass disruption to the Comanchero OMCG including arrest of 73 people who it will be alleged are South Australian members or associates. As of today in South Australia, we have charged a total of 95 people, shut down three clandestine labs, seized 30 firearms and almost $2 million in cash in the last 18 months. Those who move drugs and other illicit commodities devastate our communities through violent acts and long-term health impacts, which disproportionately affect the young and vulnerable. South Australians should feel proud and reassured that the dedicated men and women of their law enforcement agencies have stopped serious criminals from flooding our streets with guns, drugs and violence. And on that note, the Australian Federal Police has a message for organised crime. We will outsmart you and we will be a step ahead of you. Thank you. Um, okay, we're ready. Again, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, firstly, uh, we're going to see some uh, um, imagery soon of the Owen machine gun um, being fired. And we're talking about uh, uh, over the last 24 hours. It's a reminder to us all of the danger posed uh, by such uh, weapons in the hands of criminals. Um, it has no other purpose in this society than to kill people, pure and simple. So over the last 24 hours, there's been extensive public comment about how Ironside was hatched from a law enforcement perspective. And of course, uh, Commander Merrin has expanded on that uh, further this morning. And it's very important to keep thinking about the very clever police work that's happened here. Hundreds of police in South Australia, AFP and SAPOL, have been working tirelessly on this operation, uh, often missing valuable time at home with families, uh, not leading a normal life, and uh, not sleeping very much at all, particularly in the last few weeks. It's been 24-7. So on that note, uh, I think I'd like to echo everything that uh, Com uh, Commander Merrin has said, but uh, from a personal note, particularly on behalf of the SAPOL cohort, I'd like to personally thank Commander Merrin uh, and uh, Superintendent McClure for their personal unwavering professionalism uh, in bringing this together as a joint enterprise, um, not only in recent days, but for the duration. It's been an exceptional effort. So I thank them very much and the entire AFP team. Uh, my thanks then too are extended to the entire AFP. 
the partnership between the AFP and SAPOL is strong, and in South Australia particularly, it's exceptional. It's because of the people that we have here. The partnership enables the sharing of resources, intelligence and policing experience. And as uh, you've heard, that keeps you safe. Yesterday I outlined some key operational outcomes uh, from the SAPOL perspective. Um, I made the point that the exhibits themselves tell the story. We're not talking low level activity here. We've heard some of the stats, but I'm going to go over some of them again so that it's not lost in the conversation. 95 arrests in total, 40 of those uh, um, and another eight from AFP yesterday, a significant uh, day. Methamphetamine, 90 kilos, uh, $45 million worth, 50 litres of fantasy, 350 kilograms of cannabis, 10,000 ecstasy tablets, 30 firearms, which I'll talk about further, two industrial labs, three in total, but two capable of pumping out $25 million worth of amphetamine a week to our society. Cash, just under $2 million. Lamborghinis, Harley Davidsons, Mercedes Benz, Bentleys, $3 million worth. Properties restrained amounting to $12 million. Also seized yesterday, which I didn't mention, were a total of, through the operation, around about 315 electrical devices, phones and computers. Uh, so that's the ongoing work we have, trawling, looking, searching, pulling apart. And that's where the expertise, skill set and resources of the AFP and the South Australian Police uh, and the wider law enforcement community comes together. This is ongoing, this is day one of the rest of this job. So I did comment on 30 firearms that were seized. That's really important from a South Australian perspective because the potential for extreme violence committed by this criminal group, the Comancheros and their associates, uh, was extreme. It's the same for all OMCGs despite propaganda from their part, they're criminals. Two alleged plots to murder were foiled in South Australia and at least eight plots to seriously injure or maim other people were also foiled. I will provide some information on the plots to kill and the plots to injure and maim, but I have to be at this stage uh, from now onwards very careful because those charges, of course, as you're aware, are before the court. Uh, and of course, over time, much more detail will come out. So, to the two alleged murder plots. Uh, it harks back to November uh, 2020, relates to persons, including members of the Comancheros, uh, who led this, conspiring to murder a man by gunning him down with a machine gun uh, in their suburbs. Um, the alleged victim was to be lured to a restaurant or cafe on the parade at Norwood and was to be gunned down when he left. To prevent this happening, investigators seized a motorbike that was to be used uh, in the alleged uh, offence that was parked in a suburban street and intended for use in the murder. The conspirators um, were of course being monitored by uh, um, AFP and SAPOL and we seized that motorbike to prevent the murder happening. The conspirators then stole another motorcycle and set up the plot to continue. So uh, they are relentless, uh, they have no conscience and they are committed to beating the system. We seized that uh, motorcycle also. At about the same time, uh, a search was conducted uh, in uh, Scrubland in Ross Trevor and located the weapon that was intended uh, to be used uh, to commit the murder. It was a fully automatic Owen machine gun. You know, a machine gun in our society. Uh, and it was hidden in bushes. So it was also accompanied by two fully loaded magazines, 32 rounds, uh, all set to go. Uh, there was also um, some petrol nearby, uh, gloves, etc. All the markings of uh, probably um, hiding the evidence of the killing after it happened. In other words, burning the motorbike. Uh, interestingly, the victim, according to our intelligence, was one of their own. Such is the loyalty of the group. Uh, um, it, it's unbelievable the level of violence and uh, and distrust amongst this group, and. Um, uh, is an indication of what they're really like. 
That will be expanded on further in the court. The second plot to murder was just as audacious, violent and occurred in May this year. It will be alleged that uh, at a premises in Rosalind Park, uh, on two separate occasions, at least three different people uh, attended at a home address to murder the occupant. Again, as with the earlier plot, uh, there was a process by um, the AFP and SAPOL to run interference and we prevented uh, the murder on the first occasion and then on a second occasion when a male was arrested in a nearby yard uh, and located near him was a mask and gloves. And eventually as we searched um, the next day also a fully loaded uh, um, pistol. So the intention was to kill the occupant. Just like the previous plots, there's also petrol containers and stolen vehicles involved. Most disturbingly, and this is very important, the intended murder victim didn't even live at the address. So such is the danger that this group represents to you, your families, to all of us, that they're willing to go to a house and kill the occupant and it's the wrong person. It's an alarming example of the potential harm to innocent people and something uh, that uh, probably drives the police, AFP and SAPOL, across the nation also to keep battling organised crime, in particularly uh, in the, this domain, uh, OMCGs. There are eight at least other plots for serious harm and maiming of people. Uh, those occasions, again, uh, the police uh, ran uh, interference uh, to prevent people being bashed within the same criminal network. So we work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to stop them killing and hurting each other. Now the firearms are interesting to us. The access to and willingness to use firearms uh, is, is alarming. Because aside from the own machine gun, we've previously also seized a fully uh, operational military issue Steyr battle weapon and an AR-15 along with uh, um, other um, pistols and, uh, and weaponry. That's all I can say about the uh, risk posed for the uh, risk to life and the two murder plots at this stage. And I think I'd like to uh, throw to Cole now what do you want to do about the vision so and I'll or next. Uh, right. right. Is there any questions? Um, after, obviously, quite an extensive operation, why now? Why have you sprung the trap now? Was it um, well, uh, the criminals were being suspicious of what was going on with the app, or was it because there was a, a big plot in the lead-up? Why now have you sprung the trap? Um, there was always going to be a lifespan on the uh, on the length of this investigation, and uh, as Commissioner Kershaw has um, stated in the media, we're operating in partnership with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, in the United States, and other international partners. And there was a extensive activity across the platform, and other reasons that I can't go into today that meant um, we needed to close the platform. I I won't today be speaking to um, matters that involve named individuals before the court. Um, more broadly, Operation Ironside um, uh, has observed. Uh, connections with Italian Mafia, but that's uh, something that we'll, we'll provide more information on at a later time. How disturbing, how disturbing was it that there were two murder plots in suburban Adelaide? Very disturbing. Our officers immediately notified South Australia Police. We recognised the, the risk to the community and uh, again why the partnership with the South Australian Police has been so critical in preventing these violent crimes. On a national level, how would you rank or categorise South Australia's input in this whole scheme of things? On a national level, um, there's been some very significant individuals based in the jurisdiction of South Australia who we will allege were controlling entities behind significant organised crime. And again, I can't go into the specifics of particular matters before the court. So is there more crime in South Australia than perhaps, say, New South Wales? Were you, were you disturbed by the level of activity? 
I think you'll uh, see in the media today, my colleague uh, in uh, Sydney has uh, also uh, spoken to the impact of Ironside in New South Wales, and uh, that was that Sydney wore the significant brunt of operational activity. Commander, there was a federal police raid on a property on Crossroad Erbray last night. Um, can you tell us anything about that and if that led to any arrests? Again, I can't talk to the specifics of search warrant uh, details or locations or named individuals before the court. Why did you choose to make uh, it known to the public that you were using the Enom app? Was it for publicity reasons or to, to make the public aware? The Enom platform forms part of the brief of evidence before court across multiple jurisdictions in Australia and internationally. Um, can you just talk to us a little bit about what happens from here? I mean, you, you've got a significant number of arrests. How are you going to go policing and going through all these cases? So it's going to be a long slog. Um, we have uh, ample resources. Uh, we prioritise. Uh, we understand our obligation to the court. You saw yesterday the court had extended hours, which is un 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 unparalleled. So it's a huge impost on the state, uh, but the courts are on board, the police are on board, and the, the DPP in particular himself uh, presented at court to uh, lead some of the charges. So it's a uh, state response. Uh, it's going to be hard. Uh, today's day one of probably the next five years uh, because uh, uh, the court uh, process will take uh, a long time. Um, uh, we will put to proof our evidence and, um, and uh, we'll see how that goes into court. But across, um, um, uh, it's the same obligation for all police departments. But we certainly draw on the, the AFP and other law enforcement state agencies for uh, additional resources if needed, particularly in the area of uh, digital evidence and some of the research we're doing into uh, uh, the restraining of properties. Uh, we work together. So uh, it'll be hard, uh, but that's what we're here for. Can you expand on the plot to murder that was going to take place at a cafe in Norwood? I've said all I can say about that in a minute. Other, other than this, it, 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 you'll see the machine gun again. And the reason we show that is not for shock. It's to remind you that this is in Adelaide. They're wanting to go down the streets and shoot with a machine gun. You'll see what it can do. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an alarming uh, uh, approach to violence, but a reminder that uh, we've got to keep as a society focused on our legislation uh, and focused on our duties to stop organised crime. It's not just OMCGs, it is other organised crime who make millions and millions and millions of dollars uh, with, no, with no, no thought for you or I. Well, we come to work and work hard, they live the high life and are making fools of society. And that type of weapon, there would obviously be, if that was being shot randomly, there'd be collateral damage or there'd be in the hands of someone other than a military marksman, anything could have happened. Yeah, multiple bullets, 32 rounds, 64 in both uh, 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 magazines, could have gone anywhere and anyone in that vicinity would be in danger. It's absolutely reckless, but it shows who these people are. You know, they're just, they're just second rate. They, they don't belong uh, in this group. And about time we all just uh, understood that. Uh, it's not a game. These are serious, organised, terrible people, and they have no place here. No place. Are you able to clarify? Well, can, can you confirm? So both murder plots involved uh, members of the commentary bike again, uh, trying to, uh, I guess, kill uh, someone involved, but with the intention, uh, given that information might have been getting leaked, uh, and they thought that the person involved was leaking that information. So, in part, because that's already already been made public, that's correct. At least one of those in the first plot to murder, there was a thought uh, that uh, the intended victim uh, was speaking to the police. So they're just going to kill him, their friend. They come out for a coffee and uh, and get killed. This is how they work. It's it's really it's a real lens into to what's out there. And so now we battle this 24/7. Uh, a lot of stuff goes unseen. This has been going for three years. Um, unseen. Uh, because it's always an ever-present danger, but we're here also. And as, as Commander Merrin said, uh, I think it's very well put also by Commissioner Kershaw, you know, we, we, we the police family, uh, will outsmart you and we will never give up. We're supported by government, um, we're supported by the community, because I know my family and friends don't want this in our society, so uh, we know we're on the right side of the fence. The most dangerous people in South Australia have been taken off the streets, or do you have concerns that there are still 
uh, more at large. Oh, it's a long list, but we just worked through it. So the, murder, the, the men who've been charged, are they related to the first murder plot? Say that again? The men who've been charged with this murder plot, are they related to the first one or the second one? So uh, they're different individuals in both plots, but there's one common. So there's one person involved with both plots, uh, um, but the detail uh, will come out into court about how that, how that worked. Mm. For those of us the press conference yesterday, are you able to clarify what is new today that you're giving us an update about so the, the charges? Yeah, sure. sure. So Today was uh, just the uh, focus on uh, the weapons, uh, the plots to murder and the uh, electrical devices seized and just a re reaffirmation of uh, uh, that the exhibits um, and what um, Commander Merrin has spoken about, about across Australia, particularly also here in South Australia, speak for themselves in many ways. You know, a picture paints a thousand words. It, it doesn't take a thesis to tell you what's happening here. Uh, if you can't see it, then you haven't been looking. This is serious stuff. These are serious crooks, and we're a serious policing organisation. We'll chase them forever. Um, so, are police still raiding properties today? Now there are more people before the courts? Uh, this will be ongoing. Uh, as for alerting you to where we're headed today, tomorrow probably won't happen. So there'd be a fair few people worried who are using that app that they haven't been had their door knocked on yet? Well, they'd be worried about the police. They'll be worried about their friends also turning up with a gun. That's their world. You mentioned the Ross Trevor incident, uh, that the victim didn't even live at that address. Who did live at that address? Someone who's very lucky, that's all I can say. Were they involved? I'll say no more. That's okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'll just do the video now. Okay? Yep. Thanks for the Okay. Come on, just let us know what you want. Just going to pass it first. Just want to look at the video. Is that right, Camos? Just get uh, both Commander and AC look at the video. <laughs> Just a bit the other side, thanks. Uh, what would you like?